Good afternoon. What I'd like to do today is start off with a question. While sitting in this room, each and every one of us learned that 14 Boeing 747s fell from the sky due to massive engine failure. The wings fell off the, uh, you know, fell off the plane and they crashed all around the world. By a show of hands, how many of us here would be interested in buying put options or shorting Boeing stock with a show of hands? Keep them raised. <laughs> what you're seeing are potential binary option victims. People every single day are getting involved in this type of fraud, and it's people that are smart individuals that are sitting in this room. Some of the people here work for represent government agencies, prestigious law firms, private investigators, or asset recovery specialists. And yet, from all walks of life, billions of dollars and millions of people have been caught up in the global crime wave known as binary options. When we first got into helping victims recover their money from this scam, what really brought us here was the victims. Now, I was not, uh, not an attorney. I did not plan on getting into this field. I was actually recruited into this industry unknowingly. After a couple of months of working in this type of industry, and I understood the fraud which was going on, I quit the job immediately. I put everything from my life on hold. I moved back into my parents' basement to start this company and to help the victims. Because that's what this is all about, is helping the victims who have been defrauded. Now, I want to go ahead and bring attention to some of these victims. Now, this was one of our first clients, Stephen Cole, who lost over one and a half million dollars. Um, we were working in close to seven weeks with the help of an ICC fraud net attorney, Jaguar Carmon. We were able to recover all of his money. Uh, Dr. Gary Lerner, who is actually a pediatric heart surgeon in Los Angeles at a children's hospital, with the information that we were able to go ahead and to, uh, to, to uncover with the company, we were able to get him back all of his money as well. Uh, with the help of a very young, aggressive attorney, Veronica Bierman. Um, as well, we have another client, Marisha Young, as an example, who was um, you know, defrauded by yet another company. She, is not, uh, you know, she was not uh, a big money client. She lost only you know, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars um, And with the help of her in-house attorney, uh, Tammy Hamm, we were able to recover her money as well. Uh, and these are people that reached out and said they needed help, and you know, that said they didn't know where to turn. They contacted some government agencies. They thought they didn't know where these people were. Um, and unfortunately, there are clients and there are people out there who do not know where to turn. And so it's not a matter of dollars and cents for a lot of people, it's a matter of life and death. This is Fred Turbide. Fred was caught up in the binary option scam. He lost over $350,000, feeling the shame, embarrassment, humiliation, his life savings taken away. He took his own life. This is now there are children without a father, there is a wife without her husband because he didn't know where to turn. And hopefully what uh, we're able to do is to make a difference and to go and bring some insight um, to share with you exactly what we know and help uh, to clean this up and to, you know, and to really shed some light on this. And this is the first thing where it, steps, is it starts is with the education of what binary options is, how it was started, how the recruitment models, how their marketing works, um, how they go ahead and like, recruit salespeople to work for them and a little bit on the recovery side of how their brokerages are set up and how they're using offshore components in order to go ahead and to, uh, to, to make this all happen. So what's a binary option? A uh, binary option is a very simple instrument, um, pretty much binary, by bi meaning two, zero or one. We're able to take any asset, which would go ahead and be a currency pair, a commodity, uh, a stock or an indice, in a selected amount of time. Now these times can range anywhere from 30 seconds up until a year. What they are, you know, pretty much, let's just say we have an asset, it's trading at $100 a share. In the next one minute, will this asset go up or will it go down? If you are correct, you will go ahead and get anywhere between a 70 to 83% return on investment. Or if you're wrong, you will go ahead and lose that investment that you placed on that particular trade. So it is very simple for, the, you know, for a lay person to understand and to realize, uh, wow, this is a way for them to get into a financial market because they did not understand how maybe Forex works, 
whether you have you know, liquidity providers and leveraging, this is much more simple for a layperson to understand and how they get caught up into this, because it's very easy to comprehend. Now, how did it start? Uh, obviously, the speed of internet availability going all across the US and around the world is extremely important for people to feel comfortable in doing online transactions and doing banking all over the world. This, uh, most people, I'm sure everyone here, they have a bank app, they check their, you know, they check their, uh, their statements, they check their accounts, and you, and you expect to see those numbers that are coming up on your computer or on your phone to be accurate. This is where people uh, have gone wrong, uh, especially in binary options. They get comfortable with looking at a number and uh, that number does not represent anything except for what the binary options company wants you to see. Two, booming online gambling audience. Now, in around 2006, the U.S. started to have a crackdown regulation on online casinos. Uh, in the United States, most of this audience, like uh, Party Poker, all these big uh, gaming sites, were turned down. They had large amounts of capital that was coming in and uh, then were just shut off. So a lot of the same people, they needed something to, to turn to. Uh, it's not people that get addicted to gaming, it's also the people who own these casinos, especially online, get addicted to making this type of money. So it was very important for them as well. Three, because there is also real-time data technology delivery. In a matter of second, everyone here is able to check their portfolio and able to see real-time you know, stocks that check everything in exact real time, which is extremely important for this to work. It works so quickly that you're able to manipulate uh, a pip, you're able to manipulate even the slightest trade, um, and it's, uh, you know, it's how you defraud clients. Four, there was zero regulation. Um, this is also extremely important parts in the U.S. because this fraud is extremely, uh, extremely new, and other parts around the world where there still is no regulation. In the United States, it is completely outlawed for, uh, unless, you, you know, unless you register with the SEC and the CFTC to have a binary trading platform. Many parts of the world, they do not have this regulation, and for the long time, the United States did not. Um, or was not enforcing so, and U.S. victims were able to be taken advantage of, uh, estimated to in somewhere between in the billions, two to three billion just from the U.S. alone. Um, and as well, like I said before, it's less complicated investment model than Forex. Um, Forex, you're really dealing with liquidity providers and you're able to leverage your account where people get confused and they get, you know, they're seeing a lot of numbers on the screen. I will walk you through a platform of what it looks like. It's gonna be very simple to understand. Now, obviously, much like casinos, this is where this whole thing originated. The house always wins. Uh, I'm going to ask you a question. Let's say that today we got into the car, we drove up 441 and we went to the Hard Rock. We sat down and we put $100 on a blackjack table. We went ahead and they gave us the chips. We won that hand. Now we have $200 sitting in front of us. Has the casino made money or the casino lost money? Most people think the casino has lost money. But in reality, the casino has, still, has not lost anything yet because those chips are just chips. And until you redeem those chips for cash at the cage, you are just sitting with something that's worth pennies. And so this is sort of the theories how they take advantage of people as well. Now, obviously, when you're, you know, you're expecting this transaction to be able to withdraw your money, and this is, the, this is where the trust and the honor comes from. And this is how the first part of the scheme actually operates. They take advantage of the psychology of people who have been in these scenarios where they've always times they've been to the cage and they've redeemed those chips for cash, not in binary options. Now, how do we market to a binary options? Um, how do we market to a binary options potential victim? How do they get wrapped up into this? First thing that they do is they see something called clickbait on the internet. Now, I don't know, maybe some of you have seen spam emails that you've seen and says, hey, something very similar to this. Robert S. Ryan, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, a profit of 24826.78. Now, obviously, this guy here, he's on Fiverr, and we can pay him $5 to shoot this ad for us. People are watching this, and they're saying, wow, look, this could be me. And obviously, the ad always goes like this. Hey, I'm Robert S. Ryan, and I've just made $24,000 in, uh, in the last 20 minutes with only $250. And I'm telling you, this software, this auto trading platform is so great. It's so great that there's only two spots left available in the entire world for you to get in. Now, it's only $250, so why don't you go ahead and take a chance to come into the trading software? Now, I'm sure some of you have seen some of these videos before. Uh, I'm hoping you never actually put in any of your information. But what ends up happening, soon as you do, you'll get a call, a call from a call center. 
someone in the binary options, which is called the conversion department. Their job here is to just get you in. $250, $200. Even if you're in the US, they'll put you with 200 Australian dollars just to get you to taste the platform. Once this happens, and how do they go ahead and pitch it? They say, listen, it's just a couple hundred bucks. You see the software? We have nothing to do with this software. You know, this is a Robert S. Ryan software or you know, whatever system he's on. We're just a trading platform. We have our own brokers in-house, but you're more than welcome to go ahead and try this, uh, to try this auto trading software on our platform. And if it doesn't work out, the trading software platform, you can always speak to an in-house broker that will go ahead and show you, you know, how to go ahead and make money in the financial markets the real way. So, you know, for the next, you know, for the next thing here, to really show you how this works, um, I'd like to have, is there somebody in the audience that can go ahead and help me? Um, well, I got somebody. What do you know? And I'm gonna show you a little bit how the actual pitch works right now. Uh, how a binary option pitch, what they do on the phone. Hi, I'll get a mic here. Keep the mic. Hey, what is your name? Gary. Gary. Where are you from? New York. Oh, I'm from New York as well. So, uh, Gary, you like uh, baseball? Yeah. A Yankee fan? Yeah. Oh, me too. Big Yankee fan. Reality, I'm a Mets fan. So, have you, uh, you have a lot of experience in the financial markets? Not really. Not really. I see you put in $250 on this auto trading software. Yes. Right. Okay. Gary, let me be honest with you. If I could take $250 to make $25,000, do you think that I'd be on the phone talking to you? No. Well, of course not, because it's not true. This is the reason why you don't have experience in the markets, because you're not talking to someone like me. Because I have information that's going ahead and make you rich. Now, this is what I do with my clients every single day on the phone. In the next one hour and 43 minutes, NATO is going to invoke Article 5, and there's going to be a massive invasion into Syria. Donald Trump is going to send in 40,000 ground troops into Syria. It's going to be announced in the next two hours. Now, this is such a volatility in the market that we're going to go ahead and make millions here, but you've got to go ahead and to trust me. And to show you how much trust I'm going to go ahead and build with you, I'm going to give you a bonus. I'm going to go ahead and give you money from the company. Now, don't tell, my, you know, don't tell the manager here, my boss, because I may get in trouble because you're a new client here. So what I want to do is I want to take 10, 15, 20,000 dollars from your credit card, of course, nothing too serious. What we'll do is I'm, I'm going to give you 50% bonus. We'll have $30,000 in the account. We'll go ahead and make these trades today very quickly. And by the end of this, uh, by the end of the, your statement comes, we'll return the money back to your credit card, and you'll be just trading with the profit. So how uh, about that? Uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, it sounds like a lot of money to me for, I mean, $250, I didn't have much to lose, but now you're telling me about uh, $5,000, $10,000, $15,000. That's a little bit more than I want to get into. Well, obviously, listen, there's a reason why you trade that $250, because you don't know much about the financial markets. And this is the opportunity to strike. Every big investor I have, I, listen, Gary, I can't really waste too much time on the phone with you. I got people that want to get on these positions, $50,000, $75,000, and I only got a couple left. Why don't we do this? I know fifteen may seem a lot with you. Let's go to ten, and what I'll do is I'll match another $10,000 into your account. This will be $20,000 there. We'll make an 80% return within the next 90 minutes. You'll go ahead and withdraw your money, and then your wife will never even know about it. Sound like a deal? And I can get my, tent, my original investment back. I even guarantee it. All right. Do you have a Visa or a MasterCard? I have a MasterCard. Oh, it begins with a five. That's correct. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, so just, <laughs> this is a little bit of how the scam actually works and something very similar to this. First, they want to go ahead and build rapport and trust, the KYC, know your client very well. And this is something which is done in that first part of the conversion call. Putting notes and everything, every personal detail that they know about the client is used as a bullet to load back into the gun to fire back off at them. Like some of the victims that we saw in the beginning, Stephen Cole, his son had a, you know, his son had a, uh, some kind of condition, he was very sick. He needed the money to go ahead and to help his son go to a hospital or go to school. Uh, Marisha Young, she was very big, uh, she's, you know, very, she goes to church all the time, she donated her furniture to the Salvation Army, believing that she had all these millions of dollars in her accounts. This is what happens, they prey off of people's emotions and the, they just, they're experts in psychology to go ahead and get this information out. Okay? So the scam, obviously, in binary options is to get the money from the investor and get them to deposit the account. Once I took Gary's $10,000 here, he'll never see that money again. Now, obviously, what I would normally, what usually ends up happening is they'll build more and more rapport and get as much money as possible. 
Now, once they feel that the, the trader is pretty much, they can't get themselves in any more capital, is when they'll slowly burn the account. And they have a couple of ways in doing this. But it's extremely important to build that trust and rapport with the client so he's able to feel confident to do so. And this is why the victims are so devastated because it's not just the money, it's the, also the trust that they built with a broker who's using a fake name in some part of a location where they'll say the UK, which you know, they're usually not, 99% of the time. Now, obviously, how does this work here to get the money withdrawn? How do you go ahead and burn through someone's account to make sure that this happens? One, we want to downplay the risks of binary option trading. The first thing that someone will do is I'll use the word guarantees, send out contracts to, to clients, and this is very important for people who may have binary option clients, um, you know, to looking over some of these contracts um, and using the words guarantees, risk-free. Um, these are the words which are you know, used on their paperwork the entire time. Two, hidden, unterm, unclear terms and conditions. Uh, at this point, what they will say, if I go ahead and give you a specific trade or trade over $10,000, you may not be able to withdraw for 90 days. Simple things like this that are wired that no one in their wildest dreams would ever go ahead and to sign, but people do when they're in their right mind. Three, manage the counts. Now, this is the big one here. What they will go ahead and do is saying, listen, well, you may not have any expertise in the, in the financial markets, but I do. Why don't I manage your account? Meaning you just put in twenty-five dollars or $40,000 and I will click the buttons for you. Now obviously the, the, the ruse which is set up is that the more money that I'm making for the, I tell them, say listen, the more money that I'm making for you, the more money the firm is going to make as well. Which the only fact is, is that the only money that I receive in my paycheck is the money which I take from the investor. It's got nothing to do with how any of the trading works because it's all smoke and mirrors. For credit card fraud, we have run into uh, clients that not only have they, you know, when to put the $10,000 trade on for oil, but they've seen Pizza Hut, Uber, uh, Amazon, you name it, they will use the, you know, let alone just take the $10,000, they're, they're not done yet. They will also want to use the credit card fraud uh, take their credit card and, and get as much money out as possible. It's rare, but we have seen it happen. Five bonuses. Now, um, this is usually when someone says we're going to trade with the corporate money or the, the company's money, it's a form of a bonus. What this is, is the money that's not real. So just used to go ahead and to mill clients. Now, the way that a bonus terms and conditions work is that there are 30, the, if you put in a thousand dollar bonus, you would have to go and trade 30 times minimal before you're eligible to withdraw any amount of money from your account. So for $1,000, it would be $30,000 in trades. Using the example that we had on the floor today, a $10,000 bonus would be $300,000 in trades would need to be executed before a withdrawal would be eligible. And I can guarantee you and assure you that that money would be long and gone before that would ever happen. And the sixth reason here is obviously just the refusal process to withdraw. You would go and you say, withdraw your money. And even if you followed all the terms and conditions, all of the bonuses, you haven't, you jump through every hoop and uh, every hurdle, they just won't answer your call. Just say no. And eventually they'll just mark it on the CRM and you just will not get a call back. And that's how, the, and that's how it is because they need to make sure that you don't have your money, that they cannot give you your money back because that's how they make profit. Now, 90, 95% of all binary options and binary option call centers are owned or operated by, are coming out of Israel. Uh, so people that have, you know, where this is, uh, this is where it's being centrated. And there is a couple of reasons for why it's coming mostly out of Israel. Uh, the first thing is the cutting edge Israeli technology. Besides Silicon Valley, outside of Tel Aviv, is a very high, it's a very large high-tech hub with a lot of you know, great innovations that are there. You know, I can you know, speak here for hours about that, but you know, like a scalpel or a syringe, put into the wrong hands, it can be used and it can be weaponized. And that's what this technology has been done. Now, actually, uh, some of the banking software, which is, you know, which is used to protect and make sure to secure uh, you know, regular bank accounts, is, is made from the same technology, which is going to be used uh, in the binary option platforms. Two, intercontinental, multilingual, uh, multilingual available workforce. 
Now you have immigrants that go to, you know, that come to Israel, uh, all over from the United States, Canada, all over Western and Eastern Europe, plus 20% Arab population who are able to speak Arabic fluently. This gives the ability for someone to speak English to Americans, someone to speak South African English to a South African, someone to speak French, Russian, you name it, they can speak it. Um, out of a country with only eight million people, uh, most Western languages and in Arabic are able to be spoken as first languages. And these people do not speak Hebrew and they need jobs. So this is why they're willing to go ahead and to work in places like this. And three, limited government resources. Most of the resources, the Israeli government is probably, I'm not an expert in this area, but is mostly focused, is gonna be on terrorism and, and other things like this, than it is to be with financial fraud. And because of the overwhelmingness uh, of this type of fraud, it has been, you know, extremely, it's been extremely difficult to go ahead and get this cooperation um, to clean this up. Right now, there are laws that in, in Israel, they cannot go ahead and pitch binary options to Israelis, but to, to pitch to all of you, not a problem. Now, how easy is it to set up a brokerage? Now, let's just say that we wanted to go ahead and set up a brokerage account um, to, to do this. There's gonna be a couple of different steps we're able to do. One, we wanna choose a platform, and I'm gonna go more into that in depth. Incorporate an offshore company, build a website, you need a legal opinion from an attorney uh, for the banking and payment processors, get a banking account, payment processors, sales reps, and start marketing. So we're gonna go over a little this here. These are, these are platform providers for binary options technology here. Every company that you're seeing up here they're completely Israeli, 100% owned and operated. The three biggest ones, the biggest trading platform is Spot Option, uh, Panda, and then Tech Financials, which is actually traded, Tech Financials, I believe, is, trans, uh, is actually traded on the UK Stock Exchange. Um, so this, is, this technology could be used, again, to do stuff that is legitimate, but this is, they are, you know, they'll just create white labels, and they will go ahead and go to town and, and just giving licenses out. Whereas, well, they will get a rev share close to 50% in some cases. So it's not like, hey, we just, a lot of the times we'll run into cases where you'll send a letter, a demand letter to spot option. Oh, well, we didn't, we had no idea that this was gonna be used for this. They're making a revenue share. Um, and, you know, usually not as high as 50, but it can go as high as this for just help letting the scam run through their trading platform. I'm gonna show you an example of a trading platform. These are all spot option platforms here. You're able to see they're completely similar here. Call puts, call puts, call puts. Now you'll see binary book and big option. These are two companies that are completely related. They're run out of the same call center. So you have one, you know, uh, on one phone call, the guy's name is, uh, you know, the guy's name is Mark Bader. And in the next, uh, the next conversation, the next call he makes under the big option brand, his name is Daniel Buckley. Okay, and one time he'll have, he'll have a story that he's from the UK, and the next one he's from America, so depending on where he wants to pitch from. And it comes with a different backstory from each one, but sitting in the same call center, these two brands are there. Um, this Cherry Trade brand is another brand here, it's very big. Uh, a lot of Americans were into all three of these brands. All three of these brands now are located on the CFTC Smart Check Red List um, that are there. Now, the offshore jurisdictions of choice for binary brokers. You have Marshall Islands, uh, Panama, Dominica, Anguilla, St. Vincent and the Grenadines is a big one, Samoa, or anywhere that doesn't require a financial license. Now, I highlighted Anguilla. Uh, as of a couple of years ago, they made a couple of changes to their registry of how uh, companies incorporate. A lot of the binary option companies, which did originally incorporate in Anguilla, have now switched most of them to uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Uh, and this is how they will go ahead and uh, where they're going at incorporating and using a lot of these laws to their favors. Now, how does the offshore setup work? Um, so they'll register the company, let's say in Anguilla, and we'll use Binary Book for an example. Uh, they'll register the company uh, offshore in, uh, in Anguilla. They will then go ahead and have their bank account, let's say in Czech Sport, Czech Sport Alenia Bank in the Czech Republic. Um, they will claim that they are based in the UK, all while sitting in a call center in Kesaria in Tel Aviv. So we're able to look here, and one of the big problems to clean this up that attorneys face that we work with uh, is jurisdictional issues. Is the jurisdiction gonna be in the offshore? Is it gonna be in the UK where they claim they're based and not on their website? Is it gonna be where the banks and when they keep their money located? Or is it gonna be where the crime is perpetrated? Uh, you know, where do we wanna go ahead and go after them? And this is one of the big questions um, that the attorneys we work with go ahead and to face. But this is a global problem, and what they will do is they will move their bank account to Cyprus the next day, 
Um, they'll say they're calling you now, uh, not from, from the UK, now they're calling you from Ireland. And I'll move from Anguilla to, um, you know, to St. Vincent's and the Grenadines. So this is something they will do, or the Seychelles Islands and Mauritius is also big ones that they go ahead and focus on. Um, now, one of the big things in order to trigger this is also the manipulation tactic. All of this doesn't work unless they're able to have salespeople go ahead and to sell, to sling this stuff over the phone. And this is one of the big things in how they go ahead and recruit. Um, now, I want everyone to put themselves in a situation to, to really think about this way. You move to a new country, you don't speak the language, you, you know, you're not familiar with the culture, and uh, you don't, can't really find a job, and you feel completely alone and isolated. Um, this is the way a lot of people feel when they get into you know, how they are approached and into this type of fraud, unbeknownst to themselves. Um, the first thing that you want to do when you're looking for someone to unwillingly help you commit fraud is you want to desensitize them to the crime, dehumanize the victims, and three, you want to provide a sense of belongings. Now, when we, when we talked about this, how the crime is actually perpetrated, we're talking about the um, that conversion department to take the original 250. This is where every person starts off, where they're able to get comfortable and confident hearing another voice on the phone. And one of the things which is said is that it's not a person on the other end of the line. It's, a, it's not a human being, it's just a voice. This voice, they don't have any problems. They tell you they have cancer, they're lying. Whatever they're doing, these buyers or liars, do anything you possibly can to take their money. Two is desensitize them to the lies in which they are saying. So obviously, when you come into a new place, you're going to feel uncomfortable saying something that's not true. But if you're sitting around other individuals who are lying, and that's the way that the culture of the room operates, the longer you sit there, the more confident you will feel the lies that you are spewing. And the bolder these lies will get until you are so wrapped up into this. And three is to really provide a sense of belonging. And this is what really happens, and this is where we get a lot of our information is because we're able to undo this process, so to speak. What ends up happening is that someone is completely new, they feel alone, isolated. You have a binary options owner who's got a lot of money, and he's got to, you know, he cares about somebody, and he puts his arm around your shoulder and he says, achi, achi, anachnu mishpacha, which translates to be, my brother, my brother, we are family. Now this is a tactic which is used to recruit for binary option sales forces to gangs in the south side of Chicago, uh, to, to cartels and all the way around the world. It's the same type of technique which is used and which understanding this for us is extremely important uh, because when we go ahead and how we recover the assets and how we gather intelligence and information is based off of the ability to go ahead and to human, to sensitize them to the crime the, the people that are on the phones, to humanize the victims, and to provide a sense of belonging in a different way. Um, and what you're able to go ahead and to get from all of this, how this scam really works and why this is possible, is the money that is deposited into a binary options room, how do they make money? It's money deposited minus, you know, the trader withdrawals is profit for binary. So a lot of the times they will give withdrawals. If you put in 20 grand and you give back three and you say, look, I'm showing you some money, now put in another 50. That's when they give you money back. But the most important thing is that the own, there's no trades that actually take place. It is just smoke and mirrors. And whatever you can say, whatever you can show, in order to take as much money from people and give as little of it back, that is the profit for binary options companies. Now, how is our, you know, our model for going ahead and recovering assets? Obviously, you know, we like to start from the ground floor because, like I said, how we got into this, um, we like to deprogram the binary option brokers, the people that are on the phone that have pieces of information from us that, you know, that we're going to be unable to go ahead and to get. And it's usually like minutia that goes ahead and to scares people. If knowing, you know, when we're sending a, let's say, a demand, an attorney is sending a demand letter, we're able to give very minute details of what goes on in their call center culture to inside jokes that they're able to have. This goes ahead and scares them to believe that we have someone much further inside of this, uh, you know, inside of the, their company than we actually do. Um, and one of the things we have is that most people that actually work in this field, they're maybe making tens of thousands of dollars a month, but they're unable to hold on to any of their money. It's something that's completely crazy. I don't understand. I've met people who have defrauded you know, millions of dollars from people, and they weren't able to keep a penny of it. 
Um, what we're able to do is to give them a sense of you know, absolution and to say, listen, if you're able to help us out and you're able to give us some information that's going to help out some of these victims and to save somebody's life, to, to make them whole again, um, this, is, you know, this is where we get the bulk of our information. Uncovering uh, the local real UBOs and decision makers. Most of the times these guys are masked uh, because they're going to be you know, with straw men all around the world and it's the, the small guys that work there. The small guys on the floor, they know who the owner is. They know who's calling the shots. Once you get this name and you have them of saying, listen, great, why don't you go ahead and do an affidavit or you have a deposition with an attorney? You have a couple of them. It makes it really, really interesting to see how they're going to get out of this. And when they're willing to go ahead and to put this into paperwork, um, you know, it makes a very solid case for a lot of the attorneys that we're able to go ahead and have. Two is pursuing legal, and the fourth is obviously pursuing legal action. We'll go ahead and gather all this intelligence here, and we'll pass this over to capable attorneys in the proper jurisdictions. Um, they'll be able to start freezing their assets um, and sending simple demand letters. Now, every case I want to let you know that Wealth Recovery International has worked on has ended it right now is at 100% success, but still open because we don't give up on clients. Um, and so far, demand letters and things like this, most of these guys do not want to go to litigation. That's not what they want to do. They don't want to sit into court um, for, for many of different reasons. Um, but what we're able to do is to chase them around and to get this information and get it to the hands of capable attorneys um, all around the world and be able to go ahead and start bringing the money back to the victims. Now, um, we work with inter like in, uh, international attorneys, and what I'm asking each individual to get with here, um, you know, if you're an attorney, you're interested if you're, you know, to go ahead and to begin working with binary option victims and helping bringing money back. If you know something like this here, um, very talented attorney, Tamar Ham. Uh, she's the leading partner at the Ham Law Firm. Uh, you're able to speak with her. Uh, as well as someone that works with the clients, is a lead that's here as well um, from our organization. We'd love to go ahead and to speak with you and anything we can go ahead and do and help, we'd love to go ahead and branch out to network to get as much experience that we can from people that are you know, there, uh, that understand um, what, you know, understand a couple of things that we may not and be able to go ahead and help the victims of this fraud go ahead and recoup as much money as possible. Um, right now, we have recovered close to $5 million, and there's plenty of more work to do. Um, at this point now, uh, I'd like to open the floor up to questions. That's a good voice, you got it. So yeah, so from what you described, mm -hmm. about the actual binary options platform, the end user, the click up and down, bet on this, is that, is that very much just the initial stage? The actual fraud itself is, I give you $20,000, you let me get 3000 back, but the platform itself is more just like window addressing to believe that you're actually gaining these stocks. Correct, and one of the things they're able to do is manipulate the pip. So they'll actually have a Reuters Thompson logo on the bottom, and on the ticker of the platform will maybe actually the, the stock prices or the asset prices at that given time. When you go to purchase this price, and think of it this way, after a big market event, uh, let's say the non-farm payroll, for example, um, and the jobs report is much better than someone expected, dollar rises. They will go ahead and build in a spread of maybe 150 pips, and you're looking at what the current price is, but the price in which you're buying, they can manipulate at any time. So there's many different levels of fraud. At the, ability, the end game, obviously, is that they don't release your money. You could technically, in some way, make it a legitimate form. There is a legitimate uh, binary platform called Nadex, which is in Chicago. You know, they, they just run a marketplace, so to speak. Um, but because there's not an A book or a B book, it's just kind of like a C book is the only way to actually to understand this, where there's nobody actually making this trade. So they're just looking to get that money in. They can manipulate the platform, but most of the time they're trying to get you to that managed account stage so that your money's either locked up for long periods of time or they're able to burn through the account very quickly overnight so that you cannot withdraw the money. And as a follow-up, why Okay, so a lot of the times they're, they're going to go ahead into master IPs, uh, and sometimes they have. Um, you know, so I, that I couldn't answer you. I couldn't tell you exactly why. 
Um, but I can tell you that we have a computer forensic specialist we work with. Uh, his name is Gabrielle. He's actually here with us. Uh, you can get with him, and you know he definitely will be able to answer that a little bit better than I can. Any other questions that I can go ahead and field? All right. Thank you very much. I hope this was informative.